All right, so in the last video, we talked a little bit about hole punches and kind of what sizes I would get just to get started and that we had kind of everything to cover your bases while you're working on different projects. In this one, I'm gonna talk about edgers. So edgers are gonna be a real important tool because you're gonna use them a lot. Every project, you're gonna to have to edge or bevel the edge of your project once you get everything sanded and kind of sewn up and all that. The biggest thing with edgers is you're gonna to wanna to be sure and use the correct size for the material that you're edging. And so that's gonna kind of vary. You're gonna use a different edger on something like a wallet than you would on a belt or even on like a breast collar or on something like a portfolio or something that's got a lot more material in there, you're gonna need a heavier edger for that. So when it comes to type of edgers, there's a lot of them out there. Most people start out with a Tandy edger. They're fairly inexpensive and they work okay. You're gonna quickly probably outgrow those and I would recommend stepping up to at least a CS Osborne, kind of like a common edger or even a Western edger. Something like that is gonna be a little bit better quality tool. They're not super expensive. You're probably talking around $15 or so and they're gonna be very useful and you can sharpen these and do well with them. We use these for years and years in the shop never really had any issue but you're also going to want to learn how to sharpen your edgers and we do have a video on how we sharpen them in the shop it's probably not going to be the most proper way there's probably a lot of tool guys out there that that have a more precise way of sharpening them but it keeps my edgers sharp and working throughout the throughout the week every week and why don't sharpen mine every week but usually every other week i've got to touch them up a little bit i got these edgers about three years ago and they're ron's edgers and i got them from makers leather supply I've been really, really happy with these. These are more of what's called a round edger, and I've, I've really enjoyed them. They work great, they sharpen up quickly, they stay sharp longer. Um, I've been really happy with them, but they are considerably more expensive. These were, I mean, I think they might be $60 a piece, something like that. I can't remember really offhand, but I have four of them. I have size two, three, four, and five. I would recommend getting at least a number two, a number three, and then you can get a four or a five. I would probably recommend going to five because it's a bigger jump um, from the three to the five. And I think that the four and the three are so close together, but that's a personal product. It really depends on what projects you're building. So if you're building a lot of wallets, a lot of personal items, real light work, nothing real heavy and thick, then you'd probably be fine with a two and a three. And that's probably maybe all you need. If you're gonna to try to work in some holsters or some strap good work for saddlery and harness, then you're gonna to wanna to have at least a number five. There are times on my saddles when I actually need something bigger than a number five for edging those things. So you just gotta kinda of keep that in mind. But let me show you what I mean when I'm talking about using the right size edger for the material that you're using because there's a reason for that. And that way your edge looks rounded and not flat and on the side and not that where it's not round and then a flat spot and then round again. You want it rounded all the way through. So let me show you kind of how what I'm talking about. So when it comes to the material that you're edging, like this is a piece of 13, 15 ounce heavy skirting uh, leather from Herman Oak. When you cut that product out or you click it out or whatever it might be, you've got a squared edge. So it's flat surface here and flat surface on the sides. What we're wanting to do is bevel these corners off on each side. But we don't want to only bevel that. We also want, we want to go ahead and cut that to, to where the edger gets close to the center of your edge. So if we were to take a cross section of the leather that we're gonna edge, and if you do, this is the edge here. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna have a big enough edger that's gonna take the edge off close to the center of your material thickness on each side. And that way when you take this away, you've got a rounded edge. If you don't do that and you use too small of an edger, then you get this look here where you end up with just your, your corners are lobbed off, but then you've got a flat spot and then a flat spot here and here, and just the, the edges are kind of beveled off. You would prefer to come all the way to the center of the material, and that way you get, or as close to it, that way you get more of a rounded edge, and that makes for a very pleasing, very professional looking edge when you go to slick that. So in order to do that, we've got to pick the right size edger that we're gonna use for the material. So on this piece here, like I said, this is 13, 15 ounce skirting leather. And so it's fairly thick. If we take and just edge off a piece here, and then if we flip it over and do the other side, it may be hard to see in the video, but you can, there's a flat spot right here. And just the, the corners are, that was a number two. Actually, that was a number three. So that was a little bit small for the thickness of the leather that we're using. So now if we come here and I grab a number five, and do the same thing you can already see on the top how much more meat it's taking off and that this distance being wider here than this one means that it's also wider on the other side or the face side here of our edge 
So that means it's gonna take off more there as well. And so now when you look at that edge, it's rounded. And we got almost to the very center where I had made that mark earlier. So that's the thing is you wanna be sure and use the right size edger compared to the thickness of leather that you're working with. So if we were to take this little piece of latigo, this is probably about a five ounce right here. And that one there, I would probably use a number three and we'll go ahead and just edge along there. This is kind of a flanky piece of latigo here, but it shows kind of how much it's gonna take off. It's just a junk piece of latigo, but you can kind of see there we get the same effect. Like I said, it's hard to see in the video, but if you'll try this on your bench and take a thick piece of leather with a small edger, you may already be doing that because you may only have one edger, um, you'll start noticing that. And if you'll, get a, if you'll step up the edger size to, to more properly fit the material thickness that you're building on stuff and be sure you're getting that rounded look like we talked about here where it's real rounded you're going to get a lot better edges and they're going to look more professional and the edge of your material won't look as thick a lot of times when you build something it'll look really really thick and heavy because you've got a bunch of leather stacked up whether it be a wallet or a pocket slip or something like that and you can usually change the appearance of the thickness of the edge by edging it heavier so when you do that as well, you would wanna be sure that your stitches are inside far enough to where you can edge the material off that you need to edge off. And we'll talk about stitch placement along your edge in the next video. So that's a real quick rundown on edgers. Just remember, you, you need more than one. You, you can't use one edger on every project unless every project you build is roughly the same thickness, but you wanna be sure that you're using the right size. So I would recommend at least having a couple, one smaller, one bigger, and that way if you're building something different and you got a little bit thicker leather, you can go ahead and get that edge correctly. Kind of play with that on your own. Get get some stuff kind of stacked up, glued up and stitched or whatever and play with that with your edgers. You've, you may have noticed that as far as like comparing your edges to other people's edges. A lot of times it's just the number of edger you used. It's not that your slicking isn't, isn't good enough or you're not, you know, not slicking them correctly or something like that. A lot of times you just didn't edge them with a large enough edger. So give that a shot and we'll see you all in the next video.